So far we have studied uh, different systems on a reciprocating engine. The reciprocating engine is incomplete without a propeller. The basic purpose of the propeller is to convert the power being generated by the engine into thrust. So, let us see what a propeller is all about, what are the inspections, what are the maintenance required to be carried out on the propeller of a reciprocating engine. So, let us see what a propeller is. The purpose of the propeller is to create thrust to pull or push the aircraft to which it is attached. So, the engine is generating power and that power is converted into thrust to pull or push the aircraft to which it is attached. It consists of two or more blades and a central hub to which the blades are attached. So, the propeller has got two or three blades and a central hub to which the blades are attached. So, you can see in the figure there are three blades of a propeller and there is a central hub to which the blades are attached. The blades are like a rotating wing which produces thrust. So, these blades just like the wings of an aircraft blades are also wings, but they are not fixed they are rotating wing. The engine provides power to rotate the propeller blades and the power to rotate the blades is coming from the engine. The rotary power produced by an engine is converted into thrust by the propeller. As I said just now that the power is being generated by the engine and that rotary power produced by the engine is converted into thrust by the propeller. The propeller blade and an aircraft wing have an airfoil shape. Just like the wings of an aircraft, the wings have an airfoil shape. Similarly, the blades of the propeller also have an airfoil shape. You can see in the figure there is an airfoil shape shown which has a leading edge. Here you see this is your leading edge, then this is your trailing edge. The top is the cambered side or back and the bottom is the flat side or face. So, just like the airfoil section of the wing, the blades are also having an airfoil section that is why they are the blades are also called wings but they are rotating wings. Thus, the propeller blades are also considered as rotating wing. The airflow around an aircraft wing produces upward lift, whereas the airflow around a rotating wing produces forward lift. Now, there is a theory called the blade element theory, which assumes that the propeller blade is divided into various small sections, various small airfoil sections from the end of the hub to the tip of the blade. So, here in the figure you can see this is one blade shown here, this is the end of the hub and this is the end of the blade that is the tip blade and the entire blade is divided into various sections. You can see here these are the various sections of the blade and the blade element theory is assuming that the air the airfoil shape or the blade is divided into various airfoil sections from the end of the hub to the tip. Here in the second figure if you see this shows one airfoil section. Now, one airfoil section is shown here. It is a span of 1 inch and a cord C. You can see the cord is C here which is located at a radius R from the axis of rotation of the propeller. So, from the axis of rotation of the propeller it is located at a distance R. The cord C of the airfoil section varies with radius R. So, depending on the radius R the cord C will vary. If you see the blade here, you can see that the cord is different at different radius R. So, at this point the cord will be different, at this point the cord will be different and at this point the cord will be different. The cord C of the airfoil section varies with radius R, at different radius the cord will be different. Each airfoil section is designed to operate at its best angle of attack for optimum propeller efficiency. Now, just now we said that this blade element theory, this assumes that the propeller is divided into various sections and each section is designed to operate at its best angle of attack. So, that when all the sections combine together, they operate at the best angle of attack and provide 
best propeller efficiency, they provide optimum propeller efficiency. The acceleration of a mass of air to the rear of the airplane exerts the same amount of pulling force in the direction opposite that in which the air is accelerated. Now, the mass of air is being accelerated to the rear of the aircraft and that mass of air will provide a pulling force in the direction opposite that in which the air is accelerated. The forward pulling force is the thrust developed by the propeller. Now, this forward force, this forward pulling force is the thrust developed by the propeller which is in accordance with the Newton's third law of motion which states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. In this case also the mass of air is being accelerated rearwards and in reaction to it there is a forward pulling force acting which is the thrust developed by the propeller. Each airfoil section is designed to operate at its best angle of attack and travel at a different rate of speed. We have just now seen that the each airfoil section is designed to operate at its best angle of attack and operates at different rate of speed. The sections at the tip travel faster than the sections close to the hub. Now the sections which are at the tip of the blade they travel faster as compared to the sections which are close to the hub. All the sections arranged together advance the same distance during any single revolution of the propeller. So now when all the sections are combined together, together they advance the same distance during one revolution of the propeller. So this blade is divided into various sections, the sections near the tip they are travelling faster than the sections close to the hub, but the distance advanced will be same during any single revolution of the propeller when all the sections are assumed to be arranged together. The angle between the face or cord of a particular blade section and the plane in which the propeller blades rotate is termed as the blade angle. Now this is very important blade angle, it is the angle between the face or cord of the particular blade section and the plane in which the propeller blades rotate, this is termed as the blade angle. As the wings of an airplane are set at a certain angle to its forward path, similarly the propeller blades are set at a certain angle to its plane of rotation to obtain thrust. We have read that these blades are like rotating wings. As the blades, as the wings of the aircraft are set at a certain angle to its forward path. Similarly, these blades, the rotating wings are also set at a certain angle to its plane of rotation to obtain thrust. During propeller rotation, each section of the blade has a combined forward motion of the airplane and the rotary motion of the propeller. This combined motion forms a spiral path. Now, each section of the blade during rotation has a forward movement as well as a rotary movement. This forward movement as well as the rotary movement combined together gives a spiral path. It forms a spiral path. The blade angle of the propeller determines the amount of air taken by each blade. Now, the amount of air which is taken by each blade will depend on the blade angle. All sections of the blade move the same forward distance, but the circular distance moved by the sections near the tip is greater than the sections near the hub. The sections which are close to the tip, they travel faster as compared to the sections near the hub. The distance moved by the sections near the tip, rather the circular distance moved by the sections near the tip is greater than that of the sections near the hub. So the sections near the tip, they are moving a greater circular distance as compared to the sections near the hub. Whereas all the sections of the body they move the same forward distance. So sa same forward distance is being moved by all the sections but the circular distance is more for the sections near the tip and less for the sections near the hub. The gradual decrease of the blade angle from the shank towards the tip of the blade is called pitch distribution or the twist in the blade. Now we have seen that there is a blade angle the gradual decrease of blade angle 
from the shank towards the tip is termed as the twist in the blade or it is called the pitch distribution of the blade. Now let us see what is pitch. One is affective pitch and another is geometric pitch. Affective pitch is the actual distance the airplane moves forward during one revolution of the propeller in flight. So the actual distance moved by the airplane forward during one revolution of the propeller in flight is termed as the affective pitch. So it is the actual distance moved. Geometric pitch is the theoretical distance a propeller should advance in one revolution. So geometric pitch is the theoretical distance a propeller should advance in one revolution. It is a linear measurement measured in units of inches. Now slip, what is slip? The difference between the geometric pitch and the affective pitch of a propeller is termed as slip. So we have seen in our earlier slide that geometric pitch is the theoretical distance whereas the affective pitch is the actual distance. So the difference between the geometric pitch and the affective pitch is termed as the slip. It may be expressed as a percentage of the mean geometric pitch or as a linear dimension. It may be expressed in percentage of the mean geometric pitch. Forces to which propellers are subjected at high speeds. Now since the propeller is rotating at a very high speed, it is subjected to various forces. Let us see what are the different forces to which it is subjected. The propellers are subjected to the following types of stresses while rotating at high speeds. One is the centrifugal force. Here in the figure, you can see this is your centrifugal force. Then you have the torque bending force. This is figure B. You can see this is your torque bending force. Then you have the thrust bending force. Figure C, this is your thrust bending force. Then D is your aerodynamic twisting force. Here you see this is your aerodynamic twisting force and next is your centrifugal twisting force. In the figure E you can see the centrifugal twisting force. So the various forces centrifugal force, torque bending force, thrust bending force, aerodynamic twisting force and centrifugal twisting force. So various forces acting on the propeller blade. Centrifugal force, let us see what is centrifugal force. While the propellers are rotating at high speeds, the centrifugal force acts on the propeller blades that tends to throw the rotating propeller blades away from the hub. So the centrifugal force, since the propellers are rotating at a very high speed, the centrifugal force will be acting on the propeller blades and this centrifugal force will tend to throw the propeller blades away from the hub. So in the figure here, you can see the centrifugal force acting on the blades and it tends to throw the blades away from the hub. Next is your torque bending force. While the propellers are rotating at high speeds, the torque bending force is the form of air resistance which tends to bend the propeller blades in a direction that is opposite to the direction of rotation. So this torque bending force will tend to bend the blades in the direction opposite to the direction of rotation and it is in the form of air resistance. So while the propellers are rotating at high speeds, this torque bending force will tend to bend the propeller blades in a direction opposite to the direction of rotation. Next is your thrust bending force. Thrust bending force which tends to bend the blade forward is the thrust load acting on the blades. We all know that the thrust is acting in the forward direction and because of these thrust loads, the it will tend to bend the blade forward in reaction to the forces pushing the air backwards. So thrust bending force, they, are, they tend to bend the blades forward in reaction to the force pushing the air backwards. Next is aerodynamic twisting force will tend to turn the blades to a high blade angle. So this aerodynamic twisting force will tend to turn the blade to a higher blade angle. The centrifugal twisting force, this tends to turn the blades to a low blade angle. So we have seen the aerodynamic twisting force tends to turn the blades to a high blade angle whereas the centrifugal twisting force tends to turn the blades to a lower blade angle. And this centrifugal twisting force is greater than the aerodynamic twisting force. So on a propeller you have more centrifugal twisting force as compared to aerodynamic twisting force and this, the centrifugal twisting force will tend to move the blades to a lower blade angle. Now next is propeller efficiency. Now what is propeller efficiency? 
it is defined as the ratio of thrust horsepower to torque horsepower. Now, propeller efficiency it is defined as the ratio of thrust horsepower to torque horsepower. The thrust horsepower is less than the torque horsepower. The thrust force acts perpendicular to the plane of rotation of the propeller and the torque force acts parallel to the plane of rotation of the propeller. We all know that the thrust force is acting perpendicular to the plane of rotation whereas the torque force is acting parallel to the plane of rotation and propeller efficiency is the ratio of thrust horsepower to torque horsepower and thrust horsepower is less than the torque horsepower. The cockpit propeller control is blue in color. It is generally located on the central pedestal to the right of the throttle. So, inside the cockpit you have a cockpit propeller control which is blue in color and with the help of this propeller control you can vary the blade angle of the propeller. You can move the blade from a high angle to a low angle. The full forward position of the cockpit pro propeller control is the fine pitch or the full increase RPM. So, in case if the propeller control is in the full forward position then it is, is in the fine pitch position or full increase RPM or you can say a low blade angle and the full F position of the cockpit propeller control is the course pitch or the decrease RPM or higher blade angle. Now, the instruments which are helpful in case of propellers are the tachometer and the manifold pressure gauge. The control setting of the propeller is carried out using these gauges, the tachometer and the manifold pressure gauge. The tachometer indicates the RPM of the engine's crankshaft or the propeller, while the manifold pressure gauge measures the absolute pressure in the intake manifold. So, the two gauges tachometer is giving you the RPM whereas, the manifold pressure gauge is giving you the absolute pressure in the intake manifold. Aircrafts fitted with a constant speed propeller also have a manifold pressure gauge to assist in setting the correct amount of engine power during climb and cruise. So, the correct amount of power can be set using a manifold pressure gauge and aircrafts fitted with a constant speed propeller will have a manifold pressure gauge. On the gauges you have the green arc, the yellow arc and the red, red line. The green arc is for the normal operating range, the yellow arc indicates the precautionary range and the red line is the maximum operating limit. So, in case of all the instruments probably, uh, in most of the instruments you will see that the gauges have the colored markings, green is for normal operating range, yellow is precautionary range and red is your maximum limit. Now, coming to the types of propellers, there are various types of propellers. Some of them are fixed pitch propellers, ground adjustable propellers, two position pitch propellers, controllable pitch propellers, automatic pitch, constant speed, feathering constant speed. So, number of types of propellers, let us see them one by one coming to the fixed pitch propeller. So, the fixed pitch propellers, they are a fixed blade angle propellers and they are made in one piece and have two blades. So, the blade angle is fixed in this case, they are made in one piece and have two blades. They are generally made of wood, aluminium or steel. So, the fixed wedge propellers, they are made of wood, aluminium or steel. They are of one piece construction with two blades and have a fixed blade angle. These propellers are efficient for a particular set of operating conditions. So, they are efficient in one set of operating conditions only. Fixed pitch propellers are in wide use on small aircrafts. So, on small aircrafts, fixed pitch air propellers have been widely used. The advantages of single piece fixed pitch propellers are simplicity of maintenance, they are very simple in maintaining, they are very light in weight 
they offer very low drag and have minimum service requirements. So, very simple in construction, very simple in maintenance and very few service requirements. This is this type of propeller, fixed pitch propeller is widely used on small aircrafts. Next is ground adjustable propellers. In a ground adjustable propeller, the pitch setting of the blades can be adjusted on the ground. So, we have seen that in a fixed pitch propeller, there was only one blade setting, uh, it had a fixed blade angle, the blade angle could not be uh, altered, but in case of ground adjustable propellers, the blade angle can be adjusted, but only on ground with the help of tools when the engine is not operating. The blades of this type of propeller are made of either wood or metal. It has a split hub, usually of a two piece construction. So, you can see here in the figure, the hub is a split into two and clamps or large nuts are used for holding the blades securely in place. So, the clamps or the hold down nuts will hold the blades in place. The hub is split in two parts. The blade angle is adjusted by loosening the clamps or nuts and then retightening them. So, the clamps or the nuts have to be loosened and then the blade angle adjusted and then they are again retightened. The pitch can be adjusted on ground by either removing the propeller from the engine or with the propeller on the engine depending on the type of aircraft. So, in case of ground adjustable propellers, the pitch for adjusting the pitch either you have to remove the propeller from the aircraft or the pitch setting can be adjusted with the propeller on the engine. It all depends on the type of aircraft, type of propeller being used. So, in case of fixed switch propellers, the blade angle was constant. It was, we could not adjust the blade angle. It had a fixed blade angle. Whereas, in case of a ground adjustable propeller, the pitch or the blade angle can be adjusted on the ground with engine not operating either propeller fitted on the aircraft or you have to remove the propeller from the aircraft and then adjust it. Next is a two position pitch propeller. On a two position pitch propeller, the blade angle can be adjusted during operation to only two pitch settings. We have seen in case of ground adjustable propeller, the pitch setting could be adjusted only on the ground when the engine is not operating, but in case of a two position pitch propeller. You can adjust the pitch during operation, but only two pitch settings is, are possible, a high angle or a low angle, but this is possible during operation. The low blade angle or the high blade angle is selected by a two way valve, which permits engine oil to flow into or drain from the propeller. So, this is possible, the high blade angle or the low blade angle by selecting a two way valve which permits the engine oil to flow into the propeller or drain from the propeller. So, a two way valve makes it possible. For takeoff and climb, a low angle setting is used because with a low, low angle we get maximum RPM. So, for takeoff and climb, a low angle setting is used and for cruise operation, high angle settings are used. So, in case of a two position pitch propeller, only two position two pitch settings are possible, but during operation of the engine. Next is your controllable pitch propeller. On a controllable pitch propeller, the pitch can be adjusted during flight or while operating the engine on the ground by means of a mechanically, hydraulically or electrically operated pitch changing mechanism. So, in this type of propeller, controllable pitch propeller, you can adjust the pitch of the propeller while the engine in an operation either on ground or in air by means of the pitch changing mechanism which may be hydraulic, mechanical or electrically operated. In this type of propeller, pitch can be set at any position between high and low pitch. So, this type of propeller has the advantage of setting the pitch between the high and low pitch at any position, but in case of two pitch setting, we were able to select the pitch setting at only two positions, the low pitch and the high pitch. In this case, any position is possible between high and low pitch. The blade angle of the controllable pitch propeller can be set as per the operational requirement to achieve best performance from the aircraft engine. 
Now this provision of setting the pitch at any position between the low and high position makes it possible to achieve best performance from the aircraft engine. At takeoff, the propellers is set at a low blade angle or fine pitch position to achieve the maximum allowable, allowable RPM and power. As I have just now told that during takeoff, we need maximum power, we need maximum RPM. So during takeoff, the propeller blade angle is set at a low, low angle or we call it a fine pitch position so that maximum RPM and power is attained. Just after takeoff, to prevent over speeding of the engine and to achieve the best climb conditions, the propeller pitch control is slightly moved from fine to coarse pitch, thereby increasing the blade angle slightly. So, just after takeoff, we need to move the propeller control from fine pitch position to the coarse pitch position, that is, from low blade angle to high blade angle, so as to prevent over speeding of the engine. And this is only possible because of this propeller where you have the provision to adjust the pitch setting at anywhere in between the low pitch or the high pitch. At cruising altitude, the cockpit propeller control can be moved to a comparatively high pitch or coarse pitch for a low cruising RPM or to a lower pitch or fine condition for a higher cruising RPM and greater speed. So you see that in the cruising altitude, in the cruise condition also, you can adjust the cockpit propeller control and set the pitch setting as per your requirement for getting more RPM or for getting less RPM, the pitch setting can be adjusted accordingly. So this is only possible because we have the provision to adjust the pitch anywhere in between the two extreme positions. So, if you compare it with the fixed pitch or the ground adjustable propeller, you can see that the controllable level pitch propeller is, has got various advantages, it has got more flexibility and we, it helps us to achieve best performance from the aircraft engine. Next is your automatic pitch propeller. Now this automatic pitch propeller is not very popular. It is not being used, not being widely used, I will say that it is because the automatic pitch propeller aerodynamic forces acting on the blades will automatically change the blade angle within a preset range. So now in this automatic pitch propeller, the pilot is not supposed to do anything. The aerodynamic forces will automatically change the blade angle within a preset range. So the pilot has no co control over the air angle changes. But this propeller is not being widely used on the aircrafts. One of the most popular propeller used on the aircrafts on reciprocating engine aircrafts is a constant speed propeller. A constant speed propeller maintains a selected engine speed by automatically adjusting the propeller pitch. So, this type of propeller, the constant speed propeller will automatically adjust the pitch, the propeller pitch in order to maintain a selected engine speed. As the name suggests that it maintains a constant speed and this propeller will vary the pitch, will automatically adjust the pitch to maintain the constant speed. The hydraulically or electrically operated pitch changing mechanism is controlled by a governor. So there is a device called governor which will control the pitch changing mechanism and this pitch changing mechanism may be hydraulically operated or electrically operated. The governor setting is adjusted by the cockpit with the cockpit propeller control. So, in the cockpit, you have the cockpit propeller control. With that cockpit prop propeller control, the pilot will adjust the governor setting. In straight and level flight, if the engine power is increased, the blade angle is increased to make the propeller absorb the additional power while the RPM remains constant. So, 
We have seen in straight and level flight, in case the engine power is increased, the blade angle will increase to make the propeller absorb the additional power while the RPM will remain constant. Increase in propeller RPM is sensed by the governor. So, any increase in RPM, so during operation if your propeller RPM increases, so any increase in RPM will be sensed by the governor and this governor will respond by causing the propeller blade angle to increase thereby making the RPM constant. So, now your RPM has increased, the purpose of the governor, the function of the governor will be to bring this RPM down so that the constant speed is maintained. So, in order to do so, the governor will first sense the RPM, the increase in RPM, it will respond by increasing the blade angle so that once the propeller blade angle is increased, it that means more load is created on the blades, the RPM will decrease and finally, the RPM the speed will be constant. Similarly, in case if there is a decrease in propeller RPM, again it will be sensed by the governor, which will cause the propeller blade to blade angle to decrease, thereby making the RPM constant. Now, when you decrease the blade angle, the load acting on the propeller will decrease, the RPM of the propeller will increase and thus again we will have a constant speed. An increase in blade angle will cause a decrease in our engine RPM and a decrease in blade angle will cause an increase in engine RPM. The mechanisms involved in pitch changing for constant speed propeller are devices in which centrifugal force acts on flyweights, electric motors or hydraulic cylinders. So, there are different types of pitch changing mechanisms which are used on constant speed propellers and these devices may have devices in which centrifugal forces are acting on the flyweights. You may have electric motors or you may also have hydraulic cylinders. It depends on the type of propellers being used. In case of constant speed propellers, in order to change the blade angle, there are two forces involved. One is the fixed force and another is the variable force. So, fixed and variable forces are used to change the blade angle of the constant speed propellers. We have just now seen that in case if there is an increase in RPM or a decrease in RPM, so this increase or decrease in RPM will be sensed by the governor, will be sensed by the governor and this governor will either increase the blade angle or decrease the blade angle as it is required. In case if it is required to increase the RPM, then it will decrease the blade angle and in case if it is required to increase the RPM, then the blade angle will be decreased and in case if it is required to decrease the RPM, then the blade angle will be increased. Now, the fixed forces used are either counterweights or springs, air nitrogen charges and these forces tend to increase the blade angle. Now, as we have said that there are two forces involved, fixed forces and the variable forces to change the blade angle. The fixed forces, they will tend to increase the blade angle and they may be counterweights, they may be springs, they may be nitrogen charges, air nitrogen charges. Whereas, the variable force is used to change blade angle is the governor oil pressure. Now, the governor oil pressure is the force, it is the variable force which is being used to change the blade angle. Now, the balance between the centrifugal tendency of the propeller blades to maintain a low pitch angle and the governor boosted oil pressure regulates the changes in the propeller blade angle. Now, a balance is there between the centrifugal tendency of the propeller blades which maintains a low pitch angle and the governor boosted oil pressure. So, there is a balance between these two. This balance will regulate the changes in the propeller blade angle. The governor either meters oil pressure to or alloys oil to drain from the propeller cylinder 
in the quantity necessary to maintain the propeller blade angle per constant speed operation. So, this governor will meter the oil either to the propeller or will drain the oil from the propeller to maintain the propeller blade angle for constant speed operation. In order to maintain the constant speed propeller operation, the variations in blade angle are controlled by the fundamental forces. So, now there are various fundamental forces acting on the propeller. These forces are we have read about them earlier just to see them again centrifugal twisting force, centrifugal twisting moment rather propeller governor oil on the propeller piston side, propeller blade fly weights, air pressure against the propeller piston, large springs, centrifugal twisting force and aerodynamic twisting force. So, there are various forces fundamental forces they are acting on the propeller which will vary the blade angle. All these fundamental forces they are not equal in strength. The governor oil pressure is the most powerful force acting on the propeller piston. So, the governor oil pressure this is the most powerful force which is acting on the propeller piston. Other forces they are not equal. The propeller piston is mechanically connected to the blades. The blades are rotated in proportion to the piston movement. Now, the piston inside the propeller is mechanically connected to the blades and the blades are rotated in proportion to the piston movement. Now, when there is a movement in the piston, it will rotate the blades accordingly. The governor oil pressure directed to or from the propeller moves the propeller piston. Now, when this governor oil pressure is going inside the propeller or it is coming out of the propeller, it will move the propeller piston and this propeller piston will accordingly rotate the propeller blades to high or low pitch as the case may be. So, the governor oil pressure is acting on the propeller piston and the propeller piston will rotate the blade angles accordingly. Next is propeller governor. The purpose of the engine driven propeller governor is to maintain constant speed. So, the basic function, the, prop, the basic purpose of the propeller is to maintain the constant speed. It receives oil from the lubricating system and boosts its pressure to operate the pitch changing mechanism. So, the oil is coming from the lubrication system and the oil after it is coming from the lubrication system, its pressure is boosted to operate the pitch changing mechanism. The governor comprises of the following, you can see in the figure, a cut view of a governor is shown. It has various parts, a gear pump to increase the pressure of the engine oil. So, this gear pump inside the governor, this will increase the pressure of the engine oil. A pilot valve which is controlled by the flyweights in the governor. Its purpose is to control the flow of oil through the governor to and away from the propeller. So, here you see these are the gear pumps. These gear pumps are used to increase the pressure of the engine oil. The oil is coming from the lubrication system and these gear pumps will increase the pressure of the engine oil. Then you have a pilot valve, here is the pilot valve. This pilot valve is controlled by the flyweights. Here you see these are the flyweights. These flyweights will sense the propeller speed. These flyweights are there to sense the propeller speed and these flyweights will operate the pilot valve. This pilot valve will control the flow of oil through the governor to and away from the propeller. Then there is a relief valve also to regulate the operating pressure in the governor. It has a speeder spring. Here you can see there is a speeder spring shown here. This is your speeder spring to set the maximum RPM of the engine in the governor mode. So, with the help of this speeder spring, you can adjust the maximum RPM of the engine in the governor mode and this speeder spring is operated by the cockpit propeller control. When the pilot moves the cockpit propeller control, the speeder spring will adjust itself accordingly and the maximum RPM in the governor mode will be set. So, these are some of the parts of a governor. Now, the governor performs the following functions. It produces one of the fundamental control forces by boosting the engine oil pressure. So, this governor, this is producing one of the fundamental control force by boosting the engine oil pressure. Secondly, 
it maintains the required balance between the control forces. So, the governor is producing one of the fundamental force and it is also maintaining the required balance between the control forces by metering oil to and away from the propeller. So, this governor is metering oil to the propeller or away from the propeller and it is maintaining the required balance between the control forces. The quantity of oil to or from the propeller is regulated by the position of the pilot valve with respect to the propeller governor metering port. So, the position of the pilot valve with respect to the propeller governor metering port will regulate the quantity of oil to or from the propeller. The governor fly weights which senses the propeller speed are opposed by the speeder spring. Now, these fly weights they are opposed by the speeder spring. Here is your speeder spring. These this speeder spring will oppose the fly weights. The speeder spring tension is set by the cockpit propeller control. Now, the spring tension of this speeder spring is set by the cockpit propeller control. Now, there are various conditions during operation. There may be an under speed condition, there may be an over speed condition and there may be an on speed condition. In all the conditions, let us see how this governor is acting and how this governor will maintain the constant speed. That is the basic purpose of the governor to maintain the constant speed. So, let us see. Now, first is your under speed condition. A uh, governor is said to be operating in an under speed condition when the engine is operating below the RPM set by the pilot using the cockpit propeller control. Now, when some RPM is set by means of a cockpit propeller control, the spring tension of the speeder spring and a certain RPM is set by means of this cockpit propeller control. In case if the governor is operating at RPM below the RPM set by the pilot, that condition is called an under speed condition. In case if the governor is operating at more than the RPM set by the pilot using the cockpit propeller control, that is an overspeed condition and in case if the governor is operating at a speed at an RPM which is set by the pilot using the cockpit propeller control, that condition is called an on speed condition. So, let us see the first condition which is the under speed condition. A governor is said to be operating in an under speed condition when the engine is operating below the RPM set by the pilot using the cockpit propeller control. In this condition, the speeder spring force is more than the centrifugal force acting on the flyweights. Now, here you see in the figure, <coughs> these are your flyweights. These are similar, these, these in this figure also you can see the flyweights here. And this is your speeder spring. Here you can see in the figure, this is your speeder spring. And this is your pilot valve. This is your pilot control which is there in the cockpit. When you adjust this propeller control by this pilot control, you can adjust the spring tension of the speeder spring. We have moved the pilot control at a certain position. There is certain spring tension here in the speeder spring. When the governor is moving at a speed below the speed set by the pilot, it is an under speed condition. In that condition, the speeder spring force will be more than the centrifugal force acting on the flyweights. So, the speeder spring force is more than the centrifugal force acting on the flyweights. This will cause the flyweights to tilt inwards because the speeder spring force is more than the centrifugal force acting on the flyweights, the flyweights will tilt inwards. With the flyweights tilted inwards, the pilot valve will move down. Now, when the pilot valve moves down, it will open the propeller governor metering port. Here in the figure, you can see here, 
these are your flyweights these flyweights they are tilted and inwards because of the under speed condition because the speed of spring force is more than the centrifugal force acting on the flyweights in that condition the pilot valve moves down and it opens the propeller governor metering port the oil then flows through the valve port and into the propeller piston causing it to move outward now when the port is open the oil will flow into the propeller and it will cause the propeller piston to move outward this in turn will decrease the blade angle and permit the engine to return to the on speed setting so when the propeller piston moves outward it will decrease the blade angle and will permit the engine to return to the on speed setting any decrease in propeller speed due to aircraft being raised or blades move to a higher blade angle by the cockpit control will increase the load on the propeller which eventually tries to slow down so in case if there is a decrease in propeller speed due to aircraft being raised or blades move to a higher blade angle by the cockpit control it will increase the load on the propeller which will eventually try to slow down in this case the governor will immediately come into action and will sense the decrease in speed and increase the oil flow to the propeller moving the blades to a lower pitch and allowing them to maintain the same speed so the low rpm because of the aircraft being raised or the blade angle increased that which resulted in low rpm the governor immediately sensed that it came into action it will increase the oil flow to the propeller because these flyweights they tilted inwards because of the low speed the speed of spring force was more than the centrifugal force acting on the flyweights because of that the flyweights tilted inwards because of their inward tilting the pilot wall moved down it opened the port the governor propeller governor metering port and the oil went inside the propeller because of the governor oil pressure acting on the piston the piston moved outward the propeller piston moved outward and it moved the blades to a lower angle because now the blades are in a lower angle this will increase the rpm of the propeller and thus constant speed will be maintained coming to the over speed condition a governor is said to be operating in in an over speed condition when the engine is operating above the rpm set by the pilot using the cockpit propeller control we have just now discussed the three conditions over speed condition is when the engine is operating above the rpm set by the pilot in this condition the centrifugal force acting on the flyweights is greater than the speeder spring force now in the under speed condition the speeder spring force was more than the centrifugal force acting on the flyweights but in case of over speed condition the speeder spring force is less than the centrifugal force acting on the flyweights this causes the flyweights to tilt outwards now here in the figure you can see the flyweights they are tilted outwards because it is an over speed condition now flyweights tilting outwards you see here flyweights are tilting outwards this will cause the pilot valve to move upwards now in this condition the pilot valve has moved up thereby opening the propeller governor metering port allowing oil flow from the propeller piston causing counterweights on the blades to increase the pitch and slow the engine now in this condition in the over speed condition the speed of spring force is less than the centrifugal force acting on the flyweights because of which the flyweights have tilted outwards and since the flyweights are tilting outwards it has moved the pilot valve up resulting in opening of the governor metering port and the oil flowing out of the propeller because of this the counterweights on the blades increase the pitch 
and slow the engine. The engine is slowed and a constant speed is maintained. So this was the over speed condition. Next is your on speed condition. A governor is said to be operating in an on speed condition when the engine is operating at the RPM set by the pilot using cockpit propeller control. So this condition you have the engine operating at the RPM which is set by the pilot. In an on speed condition the centrifugal force acting on the fly weights is equal to the speeder spring force. Since it is the on speed condition in this case the pilot valve is neither moving upwards or downwards and is neither directing oil to or from the propeller hydraulic cylinder. So there is nothing is happening neither are the fly weights tilting inwards or outwards nor is the pilot valve moving upwards or downwards nor is the oil being directed to or from the propeller cylinder. The propeller blades are thus not moving or changing pitch. In the event of aircraft climbing or diving or there is a change in tension on the speeder spring due to pilot selecting a new propeller range through the cockpit propeller control then there will be a change in the balance of the speeder spring force and centrifugal force on flyweights and an under speed or over speed condition would result. So in case if there is a change in the speeder spring tension because of the movement of cockpit propeller control or change in the attitude of the aircraft in that case an under speed condition or an over speed condition would exist and the governor will respond accordingly as we have seen earlier in the case of two conditions. So this is how the governor maintains the constant speed. So this was about the propeller. Now let us see what are the maintenance inspections required to be carried out on the propeller. We have seen the propeller, different types of propeller, the mechanism involved and we have seen the operation of the governor. Now coming to the maintenance of propellers, it is very essential to maintain the propellers in a proper way as per the manufacturer's recommendations. So let us see what are the points in propeller maintenance. As we know that the power is generated by the pistons and the rotating crankshaft. The power which is generated by the engine is fed to the propeller to create useful thrust. In order to do that efficiently and reliably, propeller needs proper maintenance to keep it in an airworthy condition. In order to have efficient operation of the propeller and the engine propeller combination, the propeller should be thoroughly inspected during the maintenance schedules and also during the pre-flight inspections. The pre-flight inspection or daily inspection is the moment to catch any damage to the propeller early. Now because pre-flight inspection or the daily inspection, we are doing this inspection almost daily and any irregularity in the propeller or in any system, we can see it and it is very essential to do this pre-flight inspection or daily inspection properly and any problem which is going to come, we can catch it during this inspection because any problem, any snag on any system, it first gives some indications and these indications can be seen during these pre-flight or daily inspections. When inspecting propellers, it is necessary to carry out visual inspections and also feel the surface for sharp nicks, etc. So during the pre-flight inspections, we have to do lot of visual inspections. Apart from visual inspections, we also need to feel the surface of the blades. We need to feel the leading edges, the trailing edges to see that there are any sharp corners, nicks, etc. Changes in surface roughness, unusual free play and odd sounds give hints as the conditions that may affect airworthiness. As I just now said that any problem which is about to come will give some indications initially. So changes in the surface roughness, unusual free play or some sounds, this will give us some hints as to conditions that may affect airworthiness. Feel for roughness and look for small variations in color, texture changes, waviness, 
and changes in reflection that may signal the removal of protective coatings. So, these are all the signals of removal of protective coatings in case if we feel that the surface is rough, the color is changing, the texture is changing, there is waviness, there is change in reflection, this, these are all indications of the removal of protective coatings. Some areas may require the use of a 10x magnifying glass to identify small features of fine cracking. So, apart from the visual inspections, the visual inspections can be done by a naked eye or in some cases we may be required to do the visual inspections with the help of 10x magnifying glass so that we are able to identify minute cracks, fine cracks and some small damages they can be identified by using a 10x magnifying glass. Cleaning the aircraft and propeller after every flight makes sure corrosion does not get any chance. So, cleaning in maintenance cleaning is a very essential part, aircraft is released for flight or even after post flight the aircraft, the propeller, every, every corner of the aircraft should be thoroughly cleaned and proper cleaning will ensure that the corrosion is kept to a minimum. Now, what are nicks and dents on the propeller blades? Here in the figure you can see there is one blade shown here, this side you can see a small fine sharp notch like displacement of metal here, this is your nick, nick is a sharp notch like displacement of metal usually found on leading and trailing edges. Here you can see the leading and trailing edges here, you can see this nick, all nicks are potential crack starters. So, the this, these nicks they are the points from where the cracks originate. So, there are steps, there are procedures given in this document FAA AC 43.13-1B which describes what can and may be done to file out or dress the propeller. There are some dimensional limitations you need to be aware of. So, in order to do the repairs in order to do these maintenance actions, there are some limitations provided by the manufacturer and these limitations should be kept in mind while performing these tasks. Corrosion is another headache and we have just now seen that proper cleaning can keep the corrosion to minimum. So, we need to inspect for corrosion, it may be present on the propeller in varying amounts. In the figure you can see one of the blade where you can see corrosion at so many places here. You can see how badly it is corroded. Prior to performing any inspection process, maintenance personnel should determine the specific type and extent of the corrosion and become familiar with the propeller manufacturer's recommended corrosion removal limitations and practices. So, while we are performing any inspection prior to the inspection, we should understand what are the manufacturer's recommendation for the corrosion limitations and while inspecting we need to inspect that what is the amount of corrosion, what are the types of corrosion on the propeller and what are the different procedures, different methods recommended by the manufacturer to remove this corrosion and what are the limitations for the same. Keeping the propeller oiled daily especially in salty coastal environments will make sure that any corrosion is stopped before it does any damage. So, in case if we are operating the aircraft in a coastal environment where it is salty and this environment causes corrosion, in that case the propeller should be kept, should be oiled daily, this will ensure that the corrosion is stopped before it can cause any damage. Bugs remains should be removed from the propeller right after the flight or at the end of the day. So, just after the flight there will be lot of bugs on the aircraft and these bugs should be removed as soon as possible after the flight. This stuff is very corrosive and hard to remove after a week in the hangar or left in the sun out in the open. So, this is part of the cleaning 
process and it should be removed as soon as possible. Cleaning the rest of the aircraft too while we are cleaning the propeller is essential and cleaning can be done by using water and light soap. This is water and light soap, this helps in proper cleaning. So, this clean surface, a clean propeller or and wings too will perform much better, will provide higher thrust and better climb may be expected. So, cleaning should be done with clean water and a non-alkaline cleaner. So, in general cleaning it should be done with clean water and non-alkaline cleaner. Post cleaning, rinse the propeller with clean water and dry with a soft cloth. This is very essential cleaning, post cleaning very essential. We have seen that cleaning is a very essential part of the maintenance of an aircraft. Coming to constant speed propellers maintenance, a complete detailed inspection of constant speed propellers requires removal of the spinner for examination and servicing of the propeller hub and blade camp area. So, in case of constant speed propellers, it is very essential to remove the spinner, carry out a thorough examination of the hub and the blade clamp areas. All inspection and servicing of the pitch control mechanism should follow the recommendations of the propeller engine and airframe manufacturers. So, all the inspections and servicings they are to be done as per the recommendations of the engine propeller and airframe manufacturer. All the propeller ADs must be checked for compliance. Apart from the maintenance recommendations by the manufacturer, we also need to ensure that all the service bulletins and all the airworthiness directives issued by the regulatory authorities, issued by the manufacturers, they are complied and proper actions have been taken to comply them. These should be maintained by a qualified facility. The propeller hub contains the blade mechanism and every scheduled grease change removes contamination which could cause corrosion if not replaced. Now, it is very essential that all the maintenance actions are performed by qualified personnel at a qualified facility using approved practices. The hub, the propeller hub, it contains the blade mechanism and as per the manufacturer's recommendation, it should be greased regularly as suggested by the manufacturer and if we are doing so, it will remove the contamination, the old grease will remove the cont contamination and in case if it is not greased at regular intervals, it can lead to corrosion. The grease should be of the correct grade as specified by the manufacturer. Regular changing of the engine oil really helps the propeller live longer. If the propeller uses engine oil to operate the blade. Now, in case of constant speed propellers, we have seen that the engine oil is coming up from the lubricating system that the oil from the lubricating system is entering the propeller. So, the oil being used will affect the propeller. So, in case if the oil is being replaced at regular intervals as specified by the manufacturers, in general it is around 50 hours of operation or 4 months whichever is earlier and if the oil is being replaced regularly then this will help the engine to operate in a better way and will help the propeller to live longer. Yearly change of oil should be a minimum practice. It is in some cases that at least the oil should be changed in once in a year, but I will strongly recommend that the oil should be replaced at 50 hours of operation or 4 months whichever is earlier as specified by the manufacturers in most of the cases. If we do so, it will keep the engine and the propeller healthy and will help in providing better performance. Now, when the aircraft is being parked, leave the two blade propeller in the horizontal position 
and the three blade models in the one blade up position. So, in the figure you can see on the top figure you have a two blade propeller, in the bottom figure you have a three blade propeller. When we park the aircrafts, the, the two blade propeller should be in a horizontal position and the three blade model should be with one blade in the up position. This makes sure that the least amount of moisture can enter the hub and in case of park condition, the blade covers should also be used. Next is tracking, checking the propeller track. This is a very important inspection to be done and it is to be done at frequent intervals or whenever we suspect some vibrations or whenever we install a new propeller or some major maintenance is carried out on the propeller. Evaluating propeller blade tracking can indicate much information about the propeller condition. So, as just now I mentioned that this is a very important check and if we check the track of the propeller, this gives us much information about the propeller condition. Accurate propeller tracking requires securing the aircraft in a stationary position and ensure that the engine propeller shaft is tight against the thrust bearing. So, the propeller, the aircraft should be in a stationary position and the engine propeller shaft is tight against the thrust bearing. A blade tracking datum can be made simply by placing a block on the ground in front of the aircraft in the propeller arc. So, you can see in the figure there is a wooden block on the ground, raise the block as required to obtain a clearance between the blade tip and the datum block not exceeding 1 by 4 inches. So, this block is raised to obtain a clearance between the blade tip and the datum block. Draw a line on the block next to the blade tip position. Move the blade in a 4 and F direction and mark the limits of such motion. So, we have marked a line on the block next to the blade tip position. We move the blade in 4 and F direction and mark the limits of such motion. Pull out all the blades past the drawn datum, checking 4 and F free play as before. So, one by one we will move all the blades, we will move the blades past the drawn, drawn datum and we will also check the 4 and F free play as mentioned before. No blade should deviate more than 1 by 16 inch from the plane of rotation as defined by the drawn marks. So, the blades should not deviate more than 1 by 16 inch from the plane of rotation unless the manufacturer's service manuals define greater limits. Propeller tracking makes sure that the blades do move through the same position or vertical plane without moving forward or backwards which causes vibration. So, if the blades are moving through the same position and the deviation is within the limits, this ensures that the propeller blades are correctly installed and there will not be any vibration. The deviations in the track of the blades can be due to a bent blade of an improper installation of the hub on the engine. The propeller track check is very important. We need to ensure, we need to check that all the blades they move in the same plane of rotation and there is no deviation in the track of all the blades and in case if there is any deviation, the deviation should be within the limits as specified by the manufacturer. Further, there should not be any fore and aft play within the blades. It should be noted that some propeller blades require centrifugal load to seat the propeller in the hub. So, propellers of this type will show a large amount of free play. So, it depends on propeller type. There may be certain cases where centrifugal load is required to seat the propeller in the hub. So, in this case, there will be large amount of free play. Follow the manufacturer's tracking inspection requirements for these propellers. Blade to blade tracking difference could indicate a deformed blade. Now, in case if there is a tracking difference from blade to blade, then that indicates that it, there is a deformed blade. Free play differences on blades may indicate internal blade bearings, preload system or actuating pin problems. Safety practices such as ensuring that switches are off or grounding the magnetos are necessary to ensure 
that rotating the propeller does not cause the engine to start during the tracking inspection. While doing this inspection, there are certain precautions to be carried out. We need to ensure that all the switches are off. We need to ground the magnetos. We need to ensure that the propeller does not cause the engine to start during the tracking inspection. Coming to balancing of the propeller, balancing is also very essential. There are two methods of propeller balancing, one is static balancing, another is dynamic balancing. Neither method can replace the propeller because, sorry, neither method can replace the other because they are used for different purposes. Coming to static balancing, a propeller can be statically balanced only by removing it from the aircraft and evaluating the balance on a special fixture. So, for static balancing purpose, the propeller has to be removed from the aircraft and has to be put on a special fixture. Only appropriately certified persons or organizations may adjust the propeller static balance. Static balance weights are added to or removed from the propeller to correct the measured imbalance or material from the blades is removed by special grinding techniques. So, for static balancing, either you add weights or remove material from the blades. Next is your dynamic balancing. Certain models of propellers may be dynamically balanced in place on the aircraft. So, on some models, it can be done on the aircraft. Dynamic balancing of a propeller is done to provide for the lowest level of vibration in its operating range. So, the purpose of dynamic balancing is to provide lowest level of vibration in its operating range. Although the propeller is the focal point of the balancing procedure, it is the combination of the engine, engine mounting system and the propeller assembly that combines to provide the level of it is not the propeller alone, it is a combination of the engine, the mounting system and the propeller assembly that combines to provide the level of vibration. Next is overhauls of the propeller. Uh, every propeller is to be overhauled at a certain period as specified by the manufacturer. Every propeller has an overhaul period which can be in hours which is time in service or in age that is the calendar period whichever comes first. So, most commonly overhaul time prescribed by the manufacturer is 2000 hours or 6 years whichever is earlier either 2000 hours of operation or 6 calendar years whichever occurs earlier. During overhaul, the blades of a metal propeller can be repished to a coarse, coarser or finer settings as per the requirement. So, during the overhauls, there are lot of maintenance actions to be performed. You have to replace all the rubber parts, you have to measure all the clearances as specified by the manufacturer, you have to do some settings as prescribed by the manufacturer. Also, Verify in the propeller maintenance manual if any repitching has already been done as this process is limited to number of degrees in any direction. So, this is a specific requirement in case of some propellers, whatever inspections are to be done either in the field or during overhaul, all inspections are done in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations and the propeller is overhauled at prescribed intervals as specified by the manufacturer. The propeller life is counted as 00 hours from the overhaul, after the overhaul. So, in case if the propeller has completed say 2000 hours, it will be overhauled or in case if it has completed 6 years, it will be overhauled and after overhaul the propeller hours will be counted as 00 hours and it will be called as TSO 00. TSO is time since overhaul. So, time since overhaul hours will be 00. Time since new hours that is TSN will be 2000 hours, but TSO hours time since overhaul hours will be 00 and now your propeller is again valid to be operated for another 2000 hours or 6 years whichever is earlier. Age eventually causes corrosion and this is the main reason that constant speed propellers really need an overhaul when the time comes. Even if 
they only have been flown for a limited amount of time. So, because of this reason only the calendar period has been provided in prescribing the life of the propeller because if the propeller has been used for a limited amount of time in that case also the overhaul has to be carried out because there may be conditions of corrosion inside the hub which we are not able to see it from outside and in any case propeller should be overhauled at the calendar period in even if the it has not flown for many hours. So, this was about the inspections, the maintenance on propeller, the upkeep of propeller. We have seen the different types of propeller, we have seen the propeller governor, how they operate, what are the forces acting on the propellers, we have seen how to keep the propeller in proper shape. Thank you.